Thank you all for being here. I know that it may or may not have been an ice skating rink um, getting into uh, Pine Hills today, but um, I appreciate you you coming. And, and when we look outside the backside of Pine Hills into the golf course area, it makes it all worthwhile because it's absolutely stunning and um, we're nice and cozy inside. So thanks for bearing the cold and coming to join us. I am going to um, go through and share the results of the Economic Outlook Survey. So annually, we send out the Economic Outlook Survey to members, and um, actually this year we shared it with some non-business members as well, um, or non-members that are businesses, and encouraged their, um, you know, them to participate and share what their thoughts are and their experiences and um, their forecasts uh, for the year. Um, because we feel like it's important to have that really diverse perspective. Um, when we're you know, talking about the economic outlook of Sheboygan County, it's obviously very important to us. Um, and the good news is, is that you know, we, we are seeing that uh, the diversity in you know, industry, in age range of participants, in employer versus employee, um, that, you know, that, that we're getting a good mix of respondents. Um, this year, we also noticed that roughly 15% um, of our membership actually did participate. And so if you conduct surveys um, on large scale, then you know that that is a really, really good number. Um, so thank you to all who participated. Um, we also saw that about 9% of our respondents were actually non-members. So again, we this was our first time really offering it out to non-member businesses. Um, so to have you know a chunk in there that were non-member businesses, we were pretty excited about that as well. So let's talk about some things uh, that might be important to you. Attraction. All right, so workforce growth. It is no secret that year over year we talk about workforce attraction and retention and the importance of it and um, in many cases the dire need to attract more talent to Sheboygan County. So, you know, in looking at, um, you know, talking about workforce growth, 56.7% of our organizations expect that their workforce will grow in the next 12 months. This is down about 4.3% over the previous year. Um, but, you know, having more than 50% growth in, you know, year over year is, is, is significantly great space to be as a community. This question is also asked annually by our partners at WMC, or Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, which is a statewide agency. And their respondents reported that about 49% of employers expected um, increase in workforce. So we continue to be ahead of what the state is reporting out. And then looking at, um, looking at, you know, who's having trouble and who's not having trouble, we still continue to see the trend that 75% of respondents are sharing that it's really hard to find workers. So we have to, as a community, um, collaborate and continue to find ways to attract and retain workforce to our area. Any, any surprises there? No hands up? Okay, I didn't think so. All right, looking at the types of positions needed. Um, so the top three that really stood out were business management um, positions, manufacturing and production, and then finance and IT. So, you know, and you can you kind of get an idea of what some of those other, um, some of those other industries are looking for. We've noticed that these top three have not really changed much over the past few years, but the order of them does fluctuate. So, um, you know, we continue to do what we can to attract in those areas specifically, um, but it doesn't mean that there's not a need, of course, for additional industries to have more workforce. As a part of our attraction and retention workforce development, um, you know, we look at what K-12 talent initiatives our companies are actively participating in. Which ones do they maybe find the most valuable? And so this year we saw this change a little bit. Um, On-site career experiences seems to be number one, very closely followed by guest speaking in schools, and then partnering with um, our wonderful partners at Inspire Wisconsin. Those, those continue to be in the lead. But you can see that youth apprenticeships, at STEAM Fest, Junior Achievement are really 
um, you know, follow, not, you know, not, there's not a huge spread between what people are doing. So it seems to me that many of our businesses, which we're so grateful for, are very, very um, engaged and actively participating in K-12 initiatives. So thank you for that. And we know that if we want our next generation of leadership, so as our students are graduating from our local high schools in the county, we want them to stay here. And the best way to engage them is to build those relationships and also to make sure they know about the wonderful opportunities we have right here in Sheboygan County. They don't have to go somewhere different in order to have wonderful careers. In looking at attraction, the top three efforts that our employers are utilizing are the employee referral programs, digital hiring, and offering college internships. Um, we, we also see that relocation expenses has climbed up. Someplace Better, our, our partners at SCEDC's uh, Someplace Better campaign is right there. Um, but there's, so there's a lot of different opportunities that our employers are utilizing. We've, you know, specifically looking at the college internships, we are honored to um, host an intern and co-op program annually. I'm not sure if many of you are aware, but uh, we partner with you know, several of our employers in Sheboygan County every summer, and we're given the opportunity to um, show our, intern our college interns and co-ops a good time by immersing them in the culture of Sheboygan County. And so, um, you know, certainly if this is an area that you are utilizing um, to attract talent to your, your workplace and you're not using the intern and co-op program to help kind of close the deal, if you will, then I would certainly encourage you to reach out and we'd be happy to share that information with you. So how likely are you to recommend a friend or family member to move to Sheboygan County? This year, 83% of respondents would likely recommend um, a friend or family member to move here. This has actually gone up um, over the previous year, which is really wonderful. Certainly, we'd like it to be closer to 100%. Um, but the fact that we're moving in the right direction is really promising. And especially as we you know, talk about employee referrals being the number one way that we attract talent to our places um, of business, then it's even more important that we have people, boots on the ground, that are recommending their friends and family members to move here, right? Because employee referrals don't work if, if people are not excited about the opportunities that Sheboygan County has to offer. So, you know, as a community continuing to build, um, build up the community real realistically and, and have more offerings available and and make this the you know continue to make this the best place to work live and play becomes really important from an attraction um, perspective so I'd like to see this number continue to increase um, but I was happy to see that it did go up over the previous year and then we will move to retention so we ask each one of you, um, what, you know, what retention efforts are you utilizing as an employer? And so offering flexibility and schedules really rose to the top this year, giving more money. I think we're all feeling that burn a little bit, right? Um, and professional development opportunities are the most widely used retention efforts. But again, you can see that it really, you know, there's, there's some others up there that are really pretty closely aligned as well. So. Um, I, you know, in the past, the flexibility in scheduling has actually been, uh, you know, a little more questionable in our county. So it was really interesting to see that that flexibility in the workplace being offered is, seems to, again, have risen to the top. And, and that's what a majority of our employers are using. That also leads to talking about remote workforce. Um, so 54.7% of current respondents reported that some of their workforce is currently working remotely. This has actually increased 9% over the previous year. So that's a, a pretty significant change. Um, also probably why flexibility and scheduling happens to be number one. Of those offering remote work options, roughly 13.6% offer full-time remote options, and roughly 23% offer at least one day per week as a remote option. 
Similarly, our friends at WMC asked the same question, and they found that about 36% of their respondents across the state of Wisconsin are offering some remote work hybrid opportunities. So the fact that we are um, at 54.7% really sets us apart from what maybe some of our um, brothers and sisters across the state of Wisconsin are currently doing. And hopefully it is uh, the reason why more people are going to want to come to Sheboygan County and work for our employers versus going to maybe some other communities throughout the state of Wisconsin. Expected percentage of wage increases this year. Um, so number two was we're giving employees more money, right? So more than 51% of our respondents have forecasted a wage increase of at least three, five, three to five percent in 2024. This is up more than 9% over 2023. More than 72.9% have budgeted for a wage increase overall, which is up 7% over the previous year. And in the most recent WMC report, 95% of their respondents reported a wage increase, with 46% of them reporting an increase of at least 3.6% or higher. So I think that this is really interesting. In the past, we have been, um, you know, we, we have wonderful employers. We pay our employees really, really well. Um, you know, it is why we have such a thriving economy in Sheboygan County. But now we're seeing that the rest of the state, employers across the state, are kind of catching on to that and they're starting to um, do the same things. And so, you know, I think it's something that we really need to be cautious of because that can be very attractive um, to somebody, you know, making a decision between this employer or that employer. And, and if the wages look exactly the same, um, you know, we, we probably need to take a look at that a little bit. And I recognize it's not always easy to give people more money. However, we also don't want to lose our workforce to employers in other places. I was trying to be nice to say that. Um, growth. So um, looking at the successes of our employers, um, sales increase year over year. And you can see you know, from 2016 on up through um, 2023. More than 56% of our respondents reported an increase in sales over the previous year. Um, another 22% reported no change. So as we, you know, talk about, um, you know, concerns in our economy as a as a country, um, as a state, as a community, it's really interesting to see that still more than 50% of our employers, our companies, are reporting that their sales growth um, is higher than it has been over previous years. And although it has declined, you know, that, that reporting has declined a little bit, um, it kind of fluctuates, but it's still really promising because, you know, if, if most of our employers were reporting that they weren't seeing an increase in sales year over year, that would be concerning. The fact that we have more than 50% of them doing so tells us that we do have a thriving economy in Sheboygan County. and we're clearly not suffering like maybe some other communities across the United States. So how do you believe specifically that your business will perform over the next 12 months? Again, to give you, um, you know, some perspective from 2019 through 2024, almost eight and a half percent of respondents expect that significant growth um, will happen in 2024. That is a 5% decline over the previous year. However, almost 78% expect some growth as a whole. Um, again, growth of any kind is very promising. We continue to be leaders in this space. 67% um, believe that Sheboygan County's economy will improve in 2024. That is compared to 60% last year. So, you know, more respondents believe that our local economy is gonna, going to continue to go up. Um, significant concerns, of course, include talent recruitment, impact of inflation, competition, and healthcare costs, um, which Dr. Gross alluded to earlier this morning. WMC also asks this same question and reported that about 42% of their respondents expect the economy across the state of Wisconsin to grow and roughly 27% expected growth across the U.S. as a whole. So as you can see, we are absolutely leaders in this space and although we continue to have those concerns of inflation, 
um, or an economic downturn overall as a community, we, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see that there is going to be um, significant growth and that we have a strong economy. So what uh, keeps you up at night? We've talked about some of these things already. Um, talent recruitment, of course, impact of inflation, health care, and competition. But again, across the board, um, it's, you know, other than the talent recruitment piece, everything else is really pretty closely aligned. Um, so, you know, we, of course, are going to continue to work on some of those different pieces that, that we have an ability to impact, such as the talent recruitment. Um, but we are not seeing that these concerns are changing year over year. They, they pretty, really do look very similarly um, over previous years. And to talk a little bit more about health care, um, the cost of health care is expected to impact more than 53% of our respondents, and this is up over the previous year. Um, this, you know, it does, healthcare costs do come up annually, but I will say that in comments throughout this survey, the cost of healthcare concerns came up more frequently this year than it has in the past. Um, so we, we really need to, you know, kind of take a look at that and see what ways as a community can we maybe impact um, the cost of healthcare in our places of work. And I'm sure that we have some wonderful healthcare partners that might be able to help us um, make some different decisions if needed. What professional development opportunities would you like to see the Chamber offer in 2024? So almost 65% um, are looking for more networking and relationship building opportunities. About 58% are looking for more leadership and management opportunities. And about 39% are looking for sales and marketing learning opportunities. Um, networking and relationship building moved to the top of the list this year. Um, that actually had looked different over the previous years. We saw that, you know, certainly declined significantly with the pandemic, but even coming out of the pandemic, um, it really wasn't top of mind for the past couple of years. So to see that rise to the top um, pretty dramatically this year was very interesting. Professional development, of course, you know, continues to be important and, re you know, overall is important to the growth of our community. Um, in order to grow and make progress, we need to give opportunities for people to learn and develop skills, um, and that really comes from the top down. So we're um, glad to see that employers are finding professional development really important as well. And then top issues. So if you completed the survey, if you recall, this is where you could throw all your comments out there. There was no um, predisposed answers for you to choose from. And these were the three different areas that rose to the top in, in those several hundreds of comments that I had to count by hand, um, <laughs> which is great. We're, we're glad that so many people are, are interested in, in giving the feedback, and that's the only way that we can grow and thrive as an organization as well. But certainly workforce development, talent attraction and recruitment, um, you know, continues to be important. Um, this also includes, you know, continuing that professional development journey, continuing the diversity, equity and inclusion journey, making sure that as we're looking to attract and retain talent to the area, that we are an inclusive community um, and we have an in inclusive employers so that our, our employees feel great about going to work every day and they want to stay with us for the long haul. Countywide collaboration is also top of mind as a concern, um, as you know, as a, a, a commitment in our strategic plan for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have said that we will lead in countywide collaboration to the best of our ability, and so um, you know we've done a lot of work over the last couple of years to you know um, build relationships, maybe mend relationships where needed, and certainly nothing is is ever perfect. But I you know believe that we've seen a lot of really wonderful progress, and then of course healthcare. So advocating for lower costs in healthcare. Um, and encourage a healthy lifestyle mentality across the county is a really important piece. So let's talk about some things that we're already doing um, and you know to tackle some of the requests that you as our members have. 
Um, we continue to mail out welcome letters to new residents, knowing the importance of being welcomed into a new community. On a monthly basis, we pull a list of, of residents that are moving throughout the community or new to the community, and um, we at the chamber send them a welcome letter. So this is, you know, sometimes 30 per month, sometimes it's 150 per month. Um, but it's just an opportunity for us to connect with our new neighbors to let them know that there are resources available. Um, if they're looking to build relationships, get involved in community, um, get involved in organizations, whatever that might look like to help them settle and want to stay here, that's something that we're providing as a service. We also, this past summer, hosted 70 interns and co-ops in person throughout the summer, including several activities and events to give them um, the chance to really be immersed in our culture. And so when we operate this intern and co-op program, we are um, we're doing fun stuff, right? We do some professional development things because these are college interns and they're obviously um, have already shown up with this very much growth mindset. But we also want them to make friends and build relationships because we know that in order to um, attract and really retain that talent to our area if they have friends here and they feel connected to the community that they're more likely to come here after graduation um, on a more permanent basis. We also launched our Junior Leadership Sheboygan County program, bringing 11th and 12th graders from across the county together to participate in this 10-month program. So you may be familiar with our Adult Leadership program, which is actually here today with us. You guys can raise your hands. Woo! Don't be shy, don't be shy. But we have um, operated the adult leadership program for, well, really several decades at this point. Um, but over the years, employers have said, why are we not doing, why are we not starting this sooner? Why are we not doing this um, at the high school level? And so we were so blessed and thankful that uh, the, the support of our board of directors um, would say, yes, let's do it, Deidre. Let's build this program and make it happen. And so for the first year, uh, we have piloted this program. Um, just earlier this week, we had uh, government day with our junior leadership um, participants where they got to learn about all different levels of government, um, such as um, hearing from Mayor Meyer about what is it like to be a mayor, what sorts of decisions are you making. Um, they did a mock common council meeting at the city of Sheboygan with several of our um, Sheboygan Common Council members. They also um, got to see what a ballot looks like um, from our friends at the county. They helped us to create a mock ballot with the names of our students. Um, and then they got to vie for their positions, which was very interesting. Um, but it was such a fun opportunity. And then to go through that whole process of understanding Wisconsin voter ID law and what is it like to go um, to you know place your ballot? What does that experience look like and feel like? And so that's just one example of some of the things that we're able to um, teach and impact with our 11th and 12th graders. Also notably, um, in talking about countywide collaboration, we have students from this year, um, students from Plymouth High School, from um, Sheboygan Falls High School, and from both North and South High School in the city of Sheboygan. So with it piloted, we wanted to keep it smaller. Um, we weren't sure how this was going to go with a group of high schoolers. It's not generally what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but we have such a phenomenal group. It's just they're, they're so sharp, these students. It's unbelievable. And so our goal for next year would be to fill that class up and to expand it into you know, our friends in Random Lake, our friends in Newsburg, Howard's Grove, um, Kohler, you know, whatever it may look like. We've been able to offer this program free of charge to the students. So removing barriers to access, um, we recognize that um, if if we you know had to charge them a fee that they may or may not be able to participate. And so we wanted to make sure that regardless of their circumstances that they could participate in this program. And so um, you know the chamber and the board uh, were very gracious and said, nope, we can do this. Let's make this happen for these students. So we've got a, a really great mix of kids that now we can impact um, you know, and, and teach them leadership skills and provide them opportunities for mentorship and to get to know the community as a whole and where they fit into the community and what impact they can make as they continue to, to transition into whether it be college or the workforce or the military or, or whatever their journey may look like for them. 
So, um, also, you know, with talent attraction and retention, we operate the Explore Your Future program. Um, so this year, um, Josh, who is in the audience somewhere, our new director of membership and workforce development, He's over here. Oh, perfect. There he is. There's the, the man of the hour. Um, so just last week, um, we we had our Explore Your Future program for the 7th and 8th graders across the county, and we had more than uh, 1,200 join us over three sessions. It is a very busy and chaotic day. We bring in lots of volunteers, and it gives an opportunity for us to connect with 7th and 8th graders. Um, give them ideas about what industry they may or may not want to go into as they progress into high school and beyond, and to ask questions of, of folks who are, are living and daily doing these jobs. And, um, and so it's, it's, such a, it's so much fun. There's um, just so much energy when you bring that many 7th and 8th graders into one space. Sometimes that energy is really good. Sometimes that energy is questionable. Um, but nonetheless, we had a ton of fun. We also hosted, uh, for the second year, the STEAM Fest program. So roughly 1,500 fourth and fifth grade students um, came together um, at uh, UW Green Bay Sheboygan campus. And we, again, kind of got to go through a, a similar model except for um, at the fourth and fifth grade level. So just introducing these fourth and fifth graders to um, STEAM industries. What is what is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math really look like in in the real world, in the workforce? And so it was really just a great opportunity to um, <laughs> to connect with them in this way. This this upcoming year, or this well now it's 2024. I don't know what day it is anymore, or year for that matter. We've had significant requests from employers to extend our um, interning co-op program beyond the summer months. So. We are currently looking at ways that we can expand that program into fall and winter because we recognize that there is still a group of college students that stay here beyond August um, and, and are looking to continue to connect throughout the community. And so we're looking for ways that we can engage them even beyond the, um, the summer intern and co-op program. In talking about workforce development, attraction, and retention, um, you know, we've spent a lot of time over the past few years talking about creating inclusive workplaces. So, in um, in 2023, we actually um, hosted our first series of creating inclusive workplaces. We have some of our our speakers. Uh, Miss Renita was one of our speakers for a couple of our sessions this year from Prevea Health. Um, but we were able to offer this program as well to employers and their employees free of charge. So six sessions, one every month throughout the year. Um, it was really just a great opportunity to learn and grow together as a community. We also continue to offer the Sheboygan County Community Guides in both English and Spanish to make sure that our Spanish-speaking neighbors have access to the information about our community. Um, we have entered into partnerships this year with the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Southeast Wisconsin, so that we can provide additional opportunities to businesses in Sheboygan County um, that may benefit from the resources that they have available. And then of course, we continue to partner with the Wisconsin Hmong Chamber of Commerce and the Wisconsin LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. Um, I currently serve on the board of directors for WCCE at the state level, so that's a great opportunity for Sheboygan County to be represented across the state. And also, I was um, invited to be on the board of locally our BACO group, or the Black American Community Outreach. So we know that our businesses are a, diver a diverse mix um, of, of you know, industries, of cultures, um, of lots of different things, and so it's really important that we um, be leaders in this space and make sure that we can provide the tools and resources to all of our businesses um, as equitably as we possibly can. Um, additional business support provided. You told us that supporting local and small businesses is important. So in 2023, we did sell more than $275,000 in chamber cash 
chamber members accepted and cashed more than $250,000 of that. So um, the chamber cash program is a local currency. It is, we sell it. Um, there is no fees to buy it. There is no fee to the business to accept it. Um, and so really 100% of that goes right into the hands of our businesses and stays in our local economy. Um, we actually gained a wonderful uh, new partnership with all of the Teats Piggly Wigglies across the county to sell chamber cash at their location. So this is a huge help to us um, because it, you know our, our team at the chamber, Drew specifically, uh, can attest that um, we get a lot of chamber cash orders and people coming in for chamber cash and it can get very busy and um, sometimes difficult to get to the other things that we need to do. Um, and so having this partnership with the Piggly Wigglies really takes um, a load off but it also expands our reach dramatically so we are so pleased um, that Mark and the team at Piggly Wiggly have said yes we want to be a part of this um, we of course um, again surprised local diners and shoppers throughout the county with free chamber cash on small business Saturday so this is probably one of my most fun experiences of the year where I get to run around to about 45 different locations on a Saturday it's a it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting day for sure to run around that much, but um, but when you get to surprise folks and you know and and celebrate that they are in local businesses in local retailers in local restaurants, um, and and give them free money. I mean everybody likes a little bit of free money, right? Um, but it also just you know goes to say we're supporting our small businesses. We want to make sure we're injecting money into the local economy and that we're supporting our community. Um, all of our chamber cash recipient or all of our chamber members can be chamber cash recipients and so if you are not familiar with the program it is not limited to any particular industry um, we have you know quick trip is a member you can use it to buy your gas um, we have some doctor's offices or dentist offices that accept it you they can people can use it for their co-pays or to help pay their bills um, and again 100% of that goes into um, that small business or that I should say business that is receiving the chamber cash there is no additional charge so when you think about you know using a maybe a visa or an American Express um, and you know businesses um, losing money because of you know fees and and different um, transaction fees that they're charging out there this is really the best way for us to kind of support um, not doing those things and putting the money directly into the hands of our local businesses now, I will say that chamber cash sales this year dropped pretty dramatically. We were unpleasantly surprised by that. Um, you know, some of it is we did lose a partner in chamber cash sales early in 2023 due to a, a new corporate policy that was out of control of our local partner. Um, but also, too, we didn't see, you know, typically we see some of our larger employers buy large chunks of chamber cash to support and celebrate their employees, um, say during the holidays or for employee appreciations. We saw significantly less of that this year, and so this is just maybe a reminder, um, an encouragement that here in 2024, um, let's make sure that, that we are encouraging even our employees to keep dollars local by giving them local currency rather than maybe sending them online to purchase things that don't benefit our community. That was my plug, keep dollars local. Um, we talked, you know, the past couple of years about our strategic plan, and so this is the final year of our strategic plan. Um, we will, um, you know, begin strategic planning going into 2025 um, throughout the course of 2024. But, you know, at the time, these were the different areas that the strategic plan really kind of rose to the surface and told us these are the things that our members want, these are the things that we need to be supporting and working towards. And we've really done a pretty phenomenal job of accomplishing um, the commitments that we've made to the membership. Okay, so um, we also asked to, you know, kind of transition into the next, where, what areas would you like to see the state of Wisconsin provide additional support? So there's been significant conversation over the past couple of years. Um, the state of Wisconsin has a, a pretty significant surplus of billions of dollars and, um, and you know, still kind of figuring out maybe where, where should some of those dollars go. Across the board, numbers are pretty close between education, infrastructure, and housing 
development. Um, although you can see that down the line, it's it's pretty even playing field across the board. So you know things like um, talent recruitment, putting money into public transportation, putting money into childcare. Um, those are also you know extremely important as well. And we know that many of those things really flow into the need for the workforce development and attraction. And um, collaboration. So, you know, one of the top three issues or concerns that our members have shared with us that they'd like to see us tackle um, maybe a little bit more, a little bit better, is to continue to build those relationships and collaborate across the county. And so, you know, we um, continue to build relationships with my friends um, at the SCEDC. Brian is here with us today. Um, community organizations, government, we've got a significant um, partnership with Sheboygan County currently that we're, we're so pleased to be a part of. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, but then, you know, also, you know, fellow chambers, I, Tammy is here from Sheboygan Falls Chamber. Thank you for being here. And so when we work together and we support each other across the county, that's what collaboration looks like, right? We've got to walk the walk not just talk the talk and so when we are building um, you know programming and we're coming together and we're working together towards a common cause that's truly what collaboration looks like and so we are really a blessed community um, and and even um, representing at the state level with WCCE or Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Executives um, often I it is shared with me about um, wow, the stuff that you guys are doing in Sheboygan County together is so phenomenal. So across the state, employers and other organ community organizations really recognize the collaboration that happens here in Sheboygan County. And I'll tell you that it does not look like this everywhere else. So we are pretty blessed that we are in this space together. Okay, so a couple of uh, numbers. Um, you know, you've told us what, what your needs are, and um, we think you've noticed that we've been doing some things very right. Um, membership grew um, pretty dramatically in 2023, so we're thrilled with that. 117 new members, and retention looks great at 90%, which is significantly ahead of the curve. Um, national average is typically between 80 and 85%, so the fact that we stay at that 90% mark is really quite promising. Um, we know, of course, that we have a lot of work to do still, right? It's never perfect, and we've always got to have that growth mindset. So new programming is on its way. Um, leadership and management, professional development has been requested by, by you, the members. And so we are currently building a small business boot camp, um, which will be introduced this spring. And then also a leadership boot camp for young professionals that will also be introduced later this year. Um, of course, continuing to improve some of the programming that we already do. So we've talked a lot about the Explore Your Future, um, Steam Fest, and, and Junior Leadership. And so as we you know, continue to grow those programs and making sure that we are engaging all schools throughout the county, um, we still have a few that haven't, you know, haven't come in and, and joined us. Um, so this year is going to be a year of building those relationships and, and engaging some of those other school districts so that we can get all students in Sheboygan County participating. Um, you know, and I, and of course, too, these programs would not be successful, of course, without sponsors and without the team at the chamber. But I also have to give a shout out. Um, Explore Your Future last week is hosted annually by our friends at Lakeshore Technical College. And so really without LTC, that that event wouldn't happen. Um, same with um, Steam Fest. Steam Fest is hosted by our friends at UWGB Sheboygan campus, and without them sharing their space with us, we absolutely couldn't make events of that size happen. So thank you. Um, in partnership, to talk a little bit about the um, partnership with our friends at the county, um, we are, um, you know, last year we talked about the workforce development attraction and marketing campaign with um, using the some of the ARBA dollars. And so in partnership, the chamber and the county have come together. We are preparing to launch very, very soon um, the actual um, attraction campaign. So we've partnered with a, um, a marketing company 
and we are looking to drop a, roughly a half a million um, dollars on a very targeted marketing campaign that will be solely focused on attracting workforce to Sheboygan County. This could not happen without our friends at the county, right? We've not ever been able to do something like this before. Um, to my knowledge, this is the most aggressive targeted marketing campaign that has ever taken place in the county, and it is here to support all employers. So it doesn't matter if you're a chamber member, doesn't matter if you're a you know, single owner operator, it doesn't matter if you're a large organization. This is an opportunity for all of our employers in the community to benefit. And of course, you know, um, oh, I, I lied. One thing I forgot. We've also entered into an agreement or an MOU with our Harbor Center Bid District, which is our business improvement district in downtown Sheboygan. So the chamber, um, beginning January 1, has begun to provide managed services for this volunteer led organization, um, supporting roughly 180 small businesses throughout the district. And this collaboration, of course, will give us an opportunity to provide additional tools and resources to those small businesses. Um, we know that Main Street is important in any community, right? When you have a strong Main Street, Street, it spills over into the rest of the communities and so for us to be able to use um, what we know works at you know with at the chamber level and mimic many of those things at the bid level is going to help us to support those additional resources so that those small businesses um, can thrive um, even more than they maybe already have in 2024 and you know of course these relationships are important to the growth of the chamber but more importantly this is what collaboration looks like this is what working together actually looks like when we come together and we say we're going to do this we're going to do it together we're going to work um, in step that's how we make impact because no one of us can do things by ourselves so with that, um, thank you so much uh, for joining us and, and for listening to me talk for probably a really long time. Um, I appreciate I appreciate you giving all of the feedback on the survey. I'm going to pass this over to my friend and colleague, Elaine Krauss. Thanks, Deidre. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Deidre, for the introduction. Uh, it's good to see everyone here and so many familiar faces this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Elaine Krauss. I am the county administrator, as Deidre clarified. The county administrator, yes. <laughs> I've been working for the county for about 11 years and in this role for one year. For those of you who may not be as familiar with county government, we are actually one of the largest employers in the area. We have 875 employees, which I think comes to a, a surprise to many. We operate in 19 different departments and offer over 200 programs and services to community members. Our total budget for 2024 is $192 million. And of that, 54 million is property tax levy, and the rest comes from federal and state revenue, as well as private pay and fees uh, for services. So the state of the county is a kind of look back on 2023, a year in review. Now, of course, during any given year, there are a number of things that happen and accomplishments that we're more proud of, but I couldn't possibly touch on all of them. So today, I'm just going to cover some of the more significant accomplishments. And I know I've, I'm on a, the clock here, so I might move through this a little quickly. Uh, and these are in no particular order. So the first up is the Sheboygan Broughton Marsh Dam reconstruction. So the Sheboygan Marsh is located just outside of Elkhart Lake. It is a 14,000 acre complex. About 65% of it is publicly owned. The former dam was built in 1938, so it uh, had a very long life, uh, but was definitely in need of repair and reconstruction. So starting in 2018, the county worked with the state, the DNR, and Ducks Unlimited to start doing some due diligence and planning for the replacement of the dam. This was a significant undertaking. And construction officially started at the beginning of 2023, and substantial completion was achieved in December. This uh, project will increase uh, public access improvements, areas for launching kayaks, better flood control, and better uh, cattail management, which is something that we struggled with for years. 
this is a, a more recent picture, as you can tell by the snow accumulation there. Um, but this was a significant project from a funding standpoint as well. In total, it was $3.3 million. Uh, the county and the state were the two largest funders, and we also had funding from Ducks Unlimited, the Sheboygan County Conservation Association, and their 26 member clubs, and then different grants, uh, including Sustain Our Great Lakes, the Fund for Lake Michigan, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And so this uh, dam replacement project will not only benefit the, the residents, but also certainly attract more visitors and uh, enhance the recreational opportunities. Fixed pace operator services at the airport. Some of you may have seen a, a press release that went out uh, yesterday. The county saw an opportunity to enhance services at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport, which we own. And so we are going to be offering the fixed base operator services or FBO services starting February 1st. And you'll see in the bottom left hand uh, side of the slide there is the, the new name and logo which was officially approved by the, the county board on Tuesday. And I want to take this opportunity as a quick plug to say thank you to many of our board members who are joining us here this morning. Uh, but the county will be, as I said, commencing FBO services at the airport on February 1st under Lake Breeze Aviation. We know that the airport is a, a critical asset for the community and is often the, the first impression that people get of the community when they fly in. And so we're glad to be able to offer services and reasonable fuel prices and uh, assist not only those in the aviation community, but those throughout the community to realize the opportunities that we have at the airport. Camera systems for law enforcement. The Sheriff's Department was the first law enforcement agency in the county to have in-squad cameras. However, we were one of the last law enforcement agencies to have the body-worn cameras. So in 2023, we equipped all of our sworn officers with the body-worn cameras, which there are 48 of them. And we also replaced all of the in-squad cameras that we had, and there are 22 of them. So this was a big project for the county. The total cost of that was just over $400,000, and that was paid for through a grant through the Department of Justice, as well as some of our American Rescue Plan Act dollars. And having these cameras will uh, enhance transparency with the public and offer um, video for prosecution. Expansion of our highest need human services. We continue to see high levels of referrals in some of our uh, programs and services that we offer through the Health and Human Services Department. Some of those programs include the Birth to Three program, our comprehensive community services, and children in need of long-term support. Our public health division, the community outreach workers that you see pictured on the left, they continue to expand their activities to engage with the Hmong and Spanish speaking communities. And our children with, in need of protection services, we are proud to say that we've had the fourth consecutive year with fewer children in out of home care, which is the graph on the right representing those numbers. So that's a, a significant accomplishment as well. We continue to, to see those numbers decrease. A couple other uh, health and human services programs that are starting up. We hired two new positions, a jail transition planner to help folks who were incarcerated uh, reacclimate themselves when they are released, as well as a youth therapist. Both of those positions are funded through the opioid epidemic litigation that the county was a recipient of. We also had two initiatives that are funded through the American Rescue Plan Act launch in 2023, and that includes the Mobile Crisis Co-Response, which is a partnership with the City of Sheboygan Police Department, and that puts mental health professionals in the squad cars with the police, as well as the Family and Neighbors Together program, which is a neighborhood-based uh, prevention effort with social workers in the community to try and prevent uh, future needs and for intense services. So we continue to adjust our service delivery to meet the, the needs and the demand based on the referrals that we receive from the community. We constructed a new asphalt plant. So the county maintains 450 miles of roadway and 152 bridges. And in order to do that effectively, uh, we have a asphalt plant which is located just west of Plymouth on Highway 23. And this provides cost-effective material for our municipal road work. 
The former asphalt plant was 37 years old, and due to its age, we couldn't find parts to uh, replace it when it needed repair. So we undertook a, a reconstruction, which um, just completed also in December of 2023. So we're currently going through testing. Of course, this time of year, we're not producing asphalt, uh, but we are certainly testing it to make sure that come the spring when we're ready to do so, it is, it's ready to go. The new plant will be more efficient, have a higher capacity, have nearly twice as much storage, and use up to 40% more recycled materials. The total cost of this replacement was just over $6 million, and that was paid for through bonding, our transportation fund balance, and net position, and also proceeds from the sale of selling the old plant. Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center, that is our skilled nursing facility that we own, located between Plymouth and Elkhart Lake. We have been undergoing a number of different facility renovations over the last couple of years, and now that we're finally putting the, the pandemic in the rear view mirror, we've been increasing our census, allowing more people to receive both short and long-term services at Rocky Knoll. We opened a new classroom in 2023 for our nurse aid training program, which allows us to train staff right on site. They can get paid and get their training for free, which is a great opportunity. We also brought our dining services back in house. We used to have a, a contracted vendor and we wanted to improve the overall food quality and the service for our residents. And because of all of the uh, work that our staff at Rocky Knoll have been doing, we again were awarded the five-star rating from the Wisconsin Department of Health Services and Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That is a mouth mouthful, but five-star rating is the only thing you need to hear in that part. So we're very proud of that uh, recognition from the state. Enhancements to our facilities. This is probably one of the less sexier topics, but it's still important to maintain our, our buildings and, and grounds. We underwent a significant renovation to the Taylor House, which is pictured on the left. That is located at the Sheboygan County Museum. That was over $100,000 to replace uh, the porch and the roof and do some other um, exterior upgrades that were needed to that building to maintain it. We also replaced some flooring uh, in the detention center for the inmates, which was over $400,000. And we replaced the tar roof on our law enforcement center, which was the original roof from 1981. So that also lived a, a long life. In addition, our north side highway shed, which is located on Highway 42, we started a 5,000 square foot addition. That building was constructed in 1994. And as you probably know, these days equipment seems to be getting larger, but our buildings haven't, so we needed to add some additional storage to accommodate the larger plows and equipment that our highway department uses, as well as some upgrades to the, the fueling system, which is what you see on the right there. Uh, crane is lowering a, a fuel tank there. So that project uh, started in 2023 and will be completed in 2024. Our strong fiscal track record. So on the left is a picture of the tax rates in the history for the last 10 years, and on the right is a picture of the tax levy and the um, trends for the last 10 years. So in November, the county board adopted a 1.69% property tax levy increase, and over the last 10 years, the average annual levy increase has been just 1.44%. And during that same time, inflation increased 2.62%. So that means that county services are offered at a bargain. The adopted property tax rate, which is the, the graph on the left, is 3.89, and that's a decrease of 11% over last year, and the eighth consecutive year that the tax rate has decreased. And both the tax levy and the tax rate are determined by factors that are both in and out of control of the, the county, such as our state levy caps, TID closures, uh, bridge aid, uh, library levy, etc. We also received a clean audit report for 2022. We are projecting a surplus from 2023. We successfully bonded for just shy of $11 million for our capital projects, and we had our Moody's credit rating reaffirmed at a double A2. 
In addition, our finance department uh, received an award, which also is a mouthful. It is the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association. <laughs> a very long title, <laughs> but it means we're doing a really good job. <laughs> and we've uh, received that for eight years in a row now, so another thing that we're proud of and further evidence of our uh, fiscal track record. For 2024, the adopted budget, as I mentioned at the beginning, is $192 million. The graph on the left shows some of the different departments and the tax levy, which is just shy of $54 million in their reliance on the tax levy. And then the graph on the right shows the departments and the overall budget at the $192 million. So this is really just depicting the different departments and their reliance on the levy versus other revenue sources. So uh, one um, obvious one is the Sheriff's Department over here on the left. They utilize 41% of our tax levy, um, but they make up only 13% of the overall budget. So that's just one um, kind of comparison that you can draw from these graphs. A couple of other key components from our 2024 budget include the new supplemental shared revenue, which we want to thank our legislators for that. That impacts all uh, local units of government and was a huge win for us in the last state biennial budget. The county specifically is going to be receiving another million dollars in state revenue from the, from the state, and we will be investing that um, in our sheriff's department. We also are going to be um, providing modest pay increases and insurance increases for our staff. Um, and continued use of the American Rescue Plan Act dollars. One other um, financial piece, the county sales tax. So we collect the half cent sales tax and the proceeds from that continue to perform very well. We were a little bit uncertain during COVID how that would affect it, but as you can see here, um, there wasn't a significant uh, change there. So in total, since the sales tax has been in place, we have collected $78.5 million. For those of you who don't know, one of the stipulations of that is that we share a uh, part of the proceeds with our local municipalities. So the towns, villages, and cities also receive a portion of that. And all of the funding that we receive from the half cent sales tax goes towards our roads and bridges and maintaining our infrastructure, which we all know is important not only for uh, quality of life, safety, but also the economy and getting um, our uh, manufacturers their, their goods from A to B. So the amount that we've shared with the municipalities for their road work over the course of this, um, of this time period is $11.3 million. Okay, and I apologize, I feel like I'm talking really fast, but I know I gotta <laughs> keep, on, <laughs> keep on schedule here. <laughs> Uh, so next, I'm going to be touching on some of the American Rescue Plan Act initiatives. I know Deidre mentioned um, some of the partnerships with the Chamber. So to refresh your memory, or for those of you who are less familiar, the county received $22.4 million from the American Rescue Plan Act, and we have to obligate those funds by December of this year and then expend them by December of 2026. So in total, we have obligated internally $11.9 million, which is about 53%, and we have obligated $10.5 million externally and that was a result of our task force that we put together. So we had six community ta task force that brought together different subject matter experts and stakeholders from across the community to identify various areas of concern. And we wanted to take these one-time funds to make an impact. And this is a really nice correlation to some of the topics that Deidre was talking about earlier. So these are the different uh, task forces that were put together and the amount of money that the county board approved as financial commitments to those different areas. So affordable housing, two million is going towards the, the workforce housing and 500,000 is going to a down payment assistance program. For behavioral health, earlier I mentioned the mobile crisis co-response, we committed a million dollars towards that. And the neighborhood social workers is 500,000. Broadband, that is two million dollars for matching funds for expansion projects for broadband throughout the county. For child care, that was a $2 million commitment for educator recruitment and training, as well as startup grants and expanded programming. For transportation, we are utilizing the $500,000, uh, currently a portion of that, to do a countywide transportation study to get data. We've heard over the years that we need more transportation, but we wanted to get data to make informed decisions, so we haven't um, kicked off that $500,000 yet, other than uh, some of it for the to complete the study. And then finally, the workforce development piece, which DJ already spoke on, so I won't go into detail there. All right. 
And then the last portion of my presentation is about the partnership that the county has with the Economic Development Corporation. The county was a founding member of the SCEDC and continues to be one of their top uh, investors. And we have a strong working relationship with the SCEDC and work together uh, throughout the year with them on a number of different initiatives. And every year for this program, they provide a list of some of the major accomplishments and notable achievements throughout the year. And uh, when Brian sent me the list, it is very, very long. I think it was six or seven pages in total. Uh, so I couldn't possibly go through all of those, but I will just take a few minutes to touch on a couple of the key initiatives. Um, so some of the major news, and I'm, I won't certainly read this to you, um, and these also are not all encompassing, but these are some of the major initiatives that certainly will impact the community for the better. So Founders Point, which is a significant achievement, and I'm wondering if maybe Mayor Meyer is gonna speak on that a little bit later. Uh, we hosted the Midwest Mercury Powerboat Challenge, which was great for the local economy, brought a lot of visitors to the area. The Random Lake Community Enhancement Fund uh, was created with an anonymous $1 million donation. The Onion River Solar Project, which is just over a thousand acres, is now online. Uh, LTC and the Freighter uh, Medical College of Wisconsin broke ground on their Center for Healthcare Excellence. The South Pier in Sheboygan finally opened after a three-year renovation project. Uh, Freighter Medical College of Wisconsin also announced plans to construct a $70 million hospital in Sheboygan. Uh, North Town, which is uh, the major development in the town of Sheboygan, is underway. And finally, the Cedar Grove Business Park, which is a 152-acre uh, business park, was approved and is the only state-certified site on I-43. So a couple um, big achievements in 2023. Here is a list of some of the businesses that opened in 2023. So we're very excited to have uh, these new businesses join our community and hope, wish them the best as they celebrate uh, their, their one-year anniversary with us. A few acquisitions and mergers that occurred with various businesses in the county. And I'm getting the, the one minute mark here, so I'm gonna keep moving. Um, and then these are just a couple notable celebrations and, and designations for some of our major companies that achieved, uh, celebrated many years in business that is phenomenal to see. Um, and then some designations uh, at the bottom of the slide there. All right, so in conclusion, I just want to, to say thank you. Uh, we. Th things that I talked about today are things that we can all take pride in and as Deidre mentioned and these things can happen as an individual and they all require collaboration and working together so I want to thank all of the uh, businesses and nonprofits and other area local units of government that we work with throughout the year to make these things happen and we want to support uh, thank you to the chamber for hosting this event and allowing us to speak and uh, look forward to all of the opportunities and challenges that 2024 brings thank you Just going to give you a couple opening remarks and then really share three things. Uh, it's been an amazing, awesome year in Sheboygan Falls, so I, there's no way I could cover it all in seven, ten minutes. But opening remarks, um, just on a personal level, I've been fortunate to be on the League of Wisconsin Municipalities board and was elected uh, to be their second vice president, which means provided I win my election, I'll be the president of the league in the next couple years. But I really mention that because part of the league's initiative uh, starting two years ago was how do we get shared revenue increased for, you know, for municipalities? And we really came up with a collaborative spirit. And gee, what county has more of a collaborative spirit and cooperation than Sheboygan County? So I believe I brought a little bit of that collaboration and cooperation <laughs> to the entire state because you had the league, which is cities and villages, got together with the counties association, the towns association, and sometimes cities and towns, well, I think in Sheboygan County they play relatively nicely, but across the state, maybe not so much. So really getting those three groups together and come up with one consistent, constant message, and then sharing it over and over again in Madison, really led to a giant impact and increased shared revenue, not only for Sheboygan Falls, not only for Sheboygan County, but everyone in the entire state. So I'm very, very proud I could bring that impact, um, not only to my own city, but everyone. And 
I'm not saying I had a large part in it, but I think I had a small, important part behind the scenes. Um, the the other thing I would just tell you as far as um, Sheboygan Falls, I'm going to focus on the downtown, Vision Park, and then we'll talk subdivisions. So the downtown, we really had a major, major uh, thing happen this year in that um, we have a store called Evans. If you haven't been to Evans, you need to go to Evans this year. Otherwise, you're missing out. It's really a throwback to my youth and what stores used to be and it's independent and it's just an awesome awesome store but for probably about five to ten years the owner was saying yeah i'm going to retire and i don't know who would ever take this over and we were like well gee ed please please give it some opportunity and um cheryl brunig the the previous director of chamber main street and myself met with him numerous times and and um Finally, he, he came up with a price and he sold it to his daughter. So it, it's staying in the family and continuing and Angela now runs it. But the city was able to help through our revolving loan fund. Again, it's a small part of it. I'm not saying the city made this happen, but we certainly encouraged the process, worked together with our partner in, in our chamber Main Street and worked together with Ed Evanoff and his daughter Angela to really get this to transfer to the next generation. So for our downtown, Evans is our anchor. So keeping Evans open and vibrant is extremely important. And Angela's really rocking on social media. So I think that was a major accomplishment in our downtown. And then I may not be the most cultured of people, but we actually added some culture to our downtown, which is cool. Um, again, it's probably no hope for my culture, but. Um, we added a, a French pastry bakery, um, excuse my French, and if you want something from there, you better get there by nine o'clock when she opens because usually if you walk in around 10, 10, 30, she's usually sold out. Um, but it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I do like to eat, so that I have that part of the culture <laughs> part down. But, but no, it's just, just amazing. And Elodie will say, well, my English isn't very good. I'm thinking, well, your English is a lot better than my French. <laughs> um, so. Again, j just an amazing two two of many really nice developments in our in our downtown, our historic downtown is really a jewel of Sheboygan Falls. Um, I could go on and on about it, but I was told I had a time limit. So let let me pivot to Vision Business Park. Um, really pleased with that entire park and what's happening out there, but had a really neat thing happen. You know. Oftentimes you meet with people and they're strangers and you're like, well, I'm, I'm glad I can help you. I'm glad I got to meet you. I'm glad your business is coming here. But um, really over the last year, I, a friend came, Bill Prusso, with his company, Pros for Technologies. And I met Bill when he was really pretty starting out in that business. And that's probably why he still takes care of my computer because I'm just a little, <laughs> a little guy now. But really was an honor to work with him and get him to move his operations into a new building in Vision Park. I, I remember Bill, I knew Bill was looking for things and I, I called him up about, I'm um, like, well, you know, Bill, there's this empty bank building. Well, that was already bought by the Merzberger Group and Merit Financial. So we had to, we had to move to option two, which was actually better option for Sheboygan Falls and that Bill just built a whole new building. They've, they've moved into that now in Vision Park. So that was just really cool to be able to help someone I know, like, and respect. Um, to, to make their dream come possible and really continue the dream of Vision Park. Um, so other things happening in Vision Park, um, Spect Electric, they started a building and I guess if you're in the trades like Scott Spect is, you can get other people to respond quickly because they got that building up really, really fast. <laughs> um, so I'm sure my building would take twice as long. <laughs> I'm not in the trades and I would be like, please, please. And, um, so that, that building went up really, really fast. And then another cool thing that's happening out there is Sign Me Up, uh, Sign Companies Ready in Sheboygan Falls, who put the signs up in Vision Park. They broke ground on their project in Vision Park. So it's kind of, I, I really like that because it's come full circle with Brian and Paul bringing their company uh, to Vision Park where they put the nice signs up for Vision Park. So that was really a nice, a nice development. And then we uh, inked another one right at the end of the year, Alfieri Laboratories, who is basically based in Newton, Wisconsin. Um, really nice people came and met with us a number of times. Um, Got to give uh, Brian at the EDC compliments. He, 
he kind of toured them around the county and took them to a lot of different places and they visited and and um, I guess you know in, in this case they just for a variety of reasons picked Sheboygan Falls were really grateful but they closed the purchaser a lot late last year so that'll they'll be building come spring when we get rid of all this snow right so um, Vision Park has gone really well it's nearing capacity um, we've already started researching different locations for parks because one thing that really amazes me about the awesome economic development your Sheboygan Falls had is we had another large large opportunity that ended up not working but it's really cool and as a mayor I can sit here and go yeah we lost one big opportunity that was confidential and I signed NDAs so I can't really say who the opportunity was but it's really cool when I can stand up here and say we lost a giant opportunity and we still had one hell of a great year I mean that's that's amazing I think any mayor would tell you like when you lose a big opportunity but you still have a great year that's just really amazing stuff so we will have to we will have to identify another business park and kind of rinse and repeat and continue our our current system of success but really happy where vision parks come from um, we purchased that land probably 18 years ago I think in my first two years as mayor and I named it vision park because my campaign slogan has always been it doesn't take vision to it doesn't take sight to run a community it takes a vision so really really happy with what's happened in vision park it took patience it took persistence but at no time with the with that development did the city ever was the city ever at risk so again, it's got great upside, which is showing today, but it never had any downside. Um, so let me pivot into subdivisions because I, I think that's really where something truly unique has happened. Um, and it didn't happen by accident. It happened through partnership, collaboration, cooperation, communication. Um, it's really a great example of how private sector and public sector and EDC and everything came together to make this happen. So by no means when I tell you how excited and pumped up I was, am I taking credit for this? I had a small part in it, which a lot of people had a small part in it. But I began to realize the impact of Founders Point subdivision when I was at a uh, WMC event. I was the guest of my wife, Tammy, who's our executive director of our chamber Main Street. And I was just quietly sitting at a breakfast that was about, you know, housing and then some then the, the uh, director of Waukesha chamber mentioned saying well wow, they're really doing a great thing in Sheboygan County I'm like ha, yeah we are <laughs> yeah, big big smile on my face but I'm like I'm just trying to be in the background and then someone asks a question about it. I'm like well and I started talking about it and then Stephanie Collette the former tourism director asked me a question she goes can you explain how tax increment districts work? I'm like, well, now you're talking my language. <laughs> um, and I said, thank you for asking. And so it re was really neat to see how Sheboygan County is catching the attention of all other 71 counties in the state. We're really rocking things. And that's a tribute to all the leadership in Sheboygan County and all the teamwork it takes to support that leadership in Sheboygan County. Um, was also at a meeting of the League of Municipalities board and Mark Roloff, the uh, city manager of Oshkosh, he was going, hey, what's going on there in Sheboygan Falls with this Founders Point? You know, and I'm like, well, geez, if I'm getting, if I'm getting their attention, um, so it was really uh, blessed to give a presentation to the chief executives workshop of the league and the, at the League of Municipalities annual meeting on Founders Point. Um, lots of questions from people uh, on how how things worked and got to explain again how tax increment districts work so if you want to know how those work just give me a call I'll tell you how they work um, but founders point exciting to see that the EDC has uh, put the first four homes for sale um, you know like all successful things you don't get there overnight and you don't get there without some challenges that have to be overcome um, I think I think through that process, Brian. I only yelled at you once, so that's pretty good. We, we did pretty good because we've had a lot of we've had a lot of seriously intense meetings. Um, but but really a compliment to the investors in the Forward Fund, Masters Gallery, Sargento, Johnsonville Kohler Company, Sheboygan County. Um, again, without without that foresight and partnership coming together to put the investment in it, nothing happens. Uh, my city administrator, Shad Tempest, identified the land, um, started developing the land. Then you realize, like, boy, if you want to put a road where all these utilities are, you got to get the utilities to move things. And getting the Sheboygan Falls uh, electric utility to move their thing was easy. Getting a couple of utilities to move took a little bit, but we got it all to happen. Um, 
I even maybe allegedly broke into a couple of the houses to check them out for myself. I think, Brian, you might have me on camera from that. Uh, but, but the funny thing is I walked around the houses, nice houses, uh, quite frankly. I've, I've always been kind of a minimalist on my house, so they're actually a little bigger than my house. But, I, but I'm in the houses and, you know, what, what a blind person in a house, funny thing, I, I'm reaching up and I'm like, oh, these ceilings are really high. And my administrator goes, stretch your fingers out one more inch. There you go. <laughs> So, but but had a really good time looking at the houses. They are nice three-bedroom houses, nice basements that are ready to be fixed up when the when the owners want to do that. Um, but really proud of that. But the Founders Point subdivision, the first phase is going to be 54 homes, and you can probably expect the full completion of those 54 homes somewhere around the end of this year. Um, they've really made great progress. So imagine in a roughly a year and a half, adding 54 homes to Sheboygan Falls is just huge. Then phase two will happen, which is another 41 homes. We're still talking about some other areas, which might be single family, might be duplex, might be apartments. I don't, I don't know, Brian, we'll have to talk about those more. I, I think maybe duplexes now, but, but again, there's plans and something will happen. So you're talking nearly 100 single family homes in this one subdivision. Um, but because I structured that tax increment district correctly when it started, I added land to it to give it more volume that didn't add tax base to it. Uh, I know I was, I was at one meeting and someone spoke at a public hearing and they, they said that was fluff. And like, well, one person calls it fluff. I just call it damn good planning. Um, because, because of that, there's certain tests you have to do in tax increment districts. 35% can be newly, newly developed residential. That means single family homes and apartments. Well, because I put that fluff in there, great planning, the 35% test could be met not only for the Founders Point project, but we we're able to we we're able to leverage the Founders Point project, which is an awesome project, and do a second subdivision with Warner Homes. Um, so we're able to meet that 35% test with all those acres added to added into, and you have to meet that single-family homes can't be more than a third of an acre in size. Well. The Founders Point subdivision is like the subdivision I live in now. Houses are close. You have to know your neighbors because you tend to hear your neighbors. Um, you see your neighbors, talk to your neighbors, just like the neighborhood I grew up in. That's what Founders Point's going to be. Um, excellent, excellent way to raise kids and <laughs> cooperate with people. I think sometimes we shut ourselves away too much, and then we wonder why we can't cooperate more. Hmm. Uh, just an observation. But but so we're, we're leveraging that into that. So what this is all going to mean is. In the last year, Sheboygan Falls Inc. deals to build over $75 million of single-family homes. That's amazing. That's just stunning. Um, but again, none of that's possible without the private-public partnership, the cooperation, um, and everything I've mentioned. So one person doesn't make this happen, but one person cooperating with another person, cooperating with another person, that's what makes this stuff all happen. Um, so everything I do in Sheboygan Falls, I'm doing to try and make Sheboygan Falls better, but I'm also concerned about the rest of the county and want to see the whole county rise because I believe Sheboygan County's got something unique going on and I'm happy to be part of that uniqueness and, and I want to make sure I'm doing my part to increase the county. So like when we talk to people about locating Vision Park, we... You're way over your time. Oh, way over? <laughs> Holy cow. That goes really fast. Well, hey, we do a lot of great things. Visit Sheboygan Falls, stop it at Evans. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to ask Randy if I could have my time back, but um, we'll, we'll discuss that at our next uh, luncheon. The um, topics that we all talk about in Sheboygan County are all positive. We collaborate and have collaborated for many years. The workforce housing, the TID that Randy talked about is so important to all of us and when they succeed as planned you like to brag about them a little bit so I'll do a little bragging to begin with the TID 4 in Plymouth which will formally close next month will put on the Plymouth tax rolls 
140 million dollars of development. Uh, that's an outstanding number from cornfields to facilities. When we close that in 25, our county will receive approximately $800,000 that they can do whatever they want with. So uh, you can say thank you when that check arrives. I might even deliver it. <laughs> the, um, the benefit of our TIDs can produce not only the mixed uh, commercial industry and housing that Randy described, uh, but it helps us to show the success and ask for more successes through a request for proposals, RFPs, that we're currently pre uh, preparing for the Highway 67 going south out of Plymouth on 67 acres by coincidence that will be a single family duplex multifamily area that we will be uh, asking for our community partners to be uh, working with us on that when we close TIF 4, uh, we will no longer be TIFFed out, meaning we can now put offers on the table. So we're looking at opening TIF 7 uh, and TIF 8. We have 127 acres on the south side of that same curve going south out of town that we'll be looking at developing uh, in a mixed use process. Uh, the infrastructure that we have to put in in order to uh, provide that opportunity is rather significant. Um, we, three years ago, closed out uh, under the state requirement for um, municipalities in a unique way that we extended our TIF by one year, uh, allowing us to be one of the first communities, if not the first community, to uh, put aside $2.3 million into a affordable workforce housing project that will supplement what Randy's already talked about from the county and our partners in Forward Fund to bring housing, which is badly needed in, in our community, uh, to the forefront. The uh, process sometimes is a little slow to develop uh, regulations. We just love regulations in every part of our life, but we have to live with them. So we make the best of what we can with them. And we currently have Kapoor doing six different studies for us uh, in six locations for uh, redevelopment, increased opportunity, uh, planning our sewer, water, and electrical uh, to these areas, which will probably come out in the spring of 24. It's very exciting that we have this kind of information in front of us. Uh, it'll include, of course, senior housing and, and other services. The um, Kmart property, which has been a pain in our butt, to be polite, uh, we're looking to create a, a TIF 8 or 9 for redevelopment of that property. Um, it's been vacant for way too long. Some of these things take a long time in trying to facilitate in working with different partners across uh, the county and the state. 
we're looking at updating our zoning codes which currently restrict us to 12 units uh, and extend that to 26 unit so we're really looking to be um, positive and 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 forward in our response we have a um, 2.5 million dollar mill pond dam to replace and just like the county it takes an awful lot to put that into uh, perspective we have a river corridor that we're working on very aggressively and our sewer and uh, treatment facility building has to be replaced at a mere cost of 4.5 million dollars uh, bonding is important to all of us in our communities and we hope uh, that our federal legislators will stay away from trying to tax our municipal bond interests that is one of our few options that we have in funding things and then one of the important things that I think we're fortunate to have in our county uh, is and, and I don't say just just because I'm a trustee at LTC and President Paul is here today thank you Paul for attending um, we are a leader nationally in innovation uh, competency-based education and we are really really willing to work with businesses with the community and I think we've shown that with Sheboygan County out at Rocky Knoll other facilities it's important that all of us as partners continue to be um, proactive and increase opportunity uh, within our community so thank you all for being part of this I think this is an exciting place to live uh, I've always said once you come here you don't leave here and I think that the progress that we're making in retention thank you to the county chamber uh, is important because we want people to um, grow in our backyard so thank you very much uh, have a good day and uh, we don't have the weather you have uh, throughout the county because in Plymouth we just close the roof and we don't worry about the snow so <laughs> thank you all Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity, Deidre, and a uh, wonderful event. Uh, first, I just want to, I need to be on the road by 10 o'clock, so if, I, uh, if I'm like 5 to, let me know because I have to be at an appointment with a client. So, um, as far as I just want to stress partnerships, um, truly, whatever we're doing across the county with municipalities, with the chamber, is our commitment to continue to build collaboration and partnerships with all businesses. And now we're going into a next phase of individuals as, as well. So what I want to stress to you is that as you look at opportunities, please reach out to the chamber, to the EDC, and make sure that your vision, your ideas become reality, okay? So that um, we have a lot of, you're going to, over the next year, I'm going to focus in on 24 to 26 because I don't want to take away from local municipalities. But over the next year, you're going to see a lot of articles about TIF districts and the development opportunities across the county. I would just like to mention Random Lake. Um, we had generous donations for a master plan there. Uh, so about half the lake is undeveloped right now. So we're creating a whole new master plan for that community. So that community on the south end of the county, which many people forget about, that is part of the county, but that is going to be huge opportunities for that 57 corridor. So uh, our vision, I just want to, uh, this is the first time the vision and mission statements for the EDC have been updated since 2010. Really, we were structured originally as a traditional economic development corporation, industrial development focused. I want to just stress to you uh, some of the things that we're going to be focused in on long term is global investment. We have global companies 
we compete globally every single day in Sheboygan County. My comment is we're going to compete globally for startup businesses as well moving forward. Our mission, um, again, everything we've talked about, pri pri private partnerships, easy for me to say, <coughs> uh, fuel growth, but vibrant neighborhoods. That's not just building subdivisions. That's not just building uh, apartments that are good for families. It's about building neighborhoods, the amenities that attract and have people belong in the marketplace. Okay? Strategic direction, so it's in your uh, packet. Uh, by the way, this all is pending my board adoption, I think in March. So just like I got approval from my executive committee to move forward with it. Um, our first strategic direction statement is our traditional economic development. So it's uh, doing the developer summit. It's doing um, the revolving loan fund program that we help uh, help grow businesses. It's helping with labor training grants with the tech college, uh, as well as with other uh, and local companies. It's making sure that we're reaching out to businesses, like Deidre talked about, decreased sales. Those, in my eyes, are companies that we need to reach out to to make sure that we're helping provide technical assistance to help them mitigate that um, drop in sales and how they grow long term. We also have the Small Business Development Center in our offices, so again, from large company to small company, we provide the technical assistance to grow businesses. We preserve wealth and then we grow wealth. Statement number two, someplace better. We've talked about that. We look forward to working with the Chamber and their initiatives on the workforce development, that marketing campaign. Um, right now, we sell all the homes through Founders Point on someplace better. We continue to do that just so that that is truly connected uh, to, uh, as a strategy. Statement number three is really tied to housing, but it's housing across all levels. Do not think of when we talk about um, housing in the building community, it's about our Founders Point or future projects. Uh, I would just stress the $2 million that is unspent on affordable housing will be about land acquisition throughout the county to make sure that Founders Point is duplicated in different markets. Okay? So we need growth across the entire county. Um, we also want to make sure that these something called third places, you work, that's one place, you live at home, second place, third place is where do you go as community gathering for that interesting place where you can belong, but you know that you got those two things. The natural one that everybody talks about here is three sheeps, where it doesn't matter who you are, you can go there and you have that sense of belonging. We're going to be working with the chamber and the communities to make sure they're already doing this, but we want to make sure that we're making sure that we're part of that engagement process as we build out communities, as we are looking at all these new developments. Oops. And number four is going back to the innovation and startups. Um, over the next three years, we will be focused in on capital formation. So in 2024, we will be announcing a revolving loan fund for early stage companies with product needs. So they're trying to launch a new product. We're hoping to have thirty dollars to $40,000 per loan to help with that uh, effort. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Sorry if I'm a little rushed, but I want to say thank you for the opportunity. We've got um, one last, um, unfortunately, Mayor Sorensen from the city of Sheboygan, um, nor the city administrator were able to join us. They are at other programs and events um, across the country. So that's great that they're representing us in places um, other than just Sheboygan County so that they can bring more excitement to our space. But with that, Mayor Sorensen has um, shared a video update with us. So we'll go ahead and watch this. I will Good morning, folks. Mayor Ryan Sorensen here. I hope that your new year is off to a great start. Today I wanted to share with you all the great projects that have been going on in our city and what's on the horizon. First and foremost, let me highlight some of the key achievements and strengths that have propelled our local economy forward. Our city has experienced robust job growth 
even with unemployment rates reaching historic lows. This is a testament to the hard work and dedication of our local businesses, as well as entrepreneurs, and of course, all of our community partners. As we gather here today, we find ourselves at another crucial juncture for a city's development in the future. The choices that we make today will undoubtedly shape the trajectory of our economic future, and I'm pleased to report that even despite all the uncertain challenges in the world that we have had to deal with as a community, our city has shown some great resilience as well as adaptability. And we know that access to affordable housing is fundamental for a strong community. The city of Sheboygan continues to embark on several housing projects. As our small businesses and large companies look to grow and retain talent, it is vital that we increase as well as diversify our housing stock. This past summer, we broke ground on several projects and we have more coming on the way. If you drive on 14th Street, you can see View 14, which is on Illinois and 14th Street, continue to build. This project will be 48 new affordable units. On Indiana Avenue, you can also see the Berkshire project, which is well underway. This project incorporates apartments as well as some units for seniors, as well as some live work units. For the next steps, you'll see the city focus on some key areas throughout the city. The city recently acquired the Gartman Farm, which is on the far south side of the city. This is about 275 acres that the city will work with developers to transform into a new neighborhood with many different types of housing, from duplexes to townhomes, as well as some single family homes as well. The city's redevelopment authority recently acquired the old Mayline property just along the river. We're working on cleaning this property up and hopefully be having some exciting and key announcements coming very soon. On the north side of the city, Freydert and the Medical College of Wisconsin is moving forward with a $70 million development. We are excited that Freydert will be coming into our market and incorporating a neighborhood hospital with emergency rooms, as well as outpatient surgery and some new office medical buildings. This project will have an estimated 300 jobs that will add to our local economy. Many also local businesses know that Sheboygan is a great place to invest and grow. And who doesn't like pizza? Now you can get pizza by the slice on Michigan Avenue from Uptown Slice, which has opened their doors to offer a great variety of pizza selections for folks that are craving some New York style pizza. Another restaurant that has opened up is Vene Pancake House. This restaurant is a sit down restaurant with wonderful breakfast and lunch options and encourage you to check it out for your next breakfast meeting. Being in the Midwest also no means that we have a strong manufacturing economy. I want to highlight some two local manufacturing companies that are expanding, investing back into their growth right here in our community. HTT, which is just off of Union Avenue, is a metal stamping facility that will be breaking ground soon on their next expansion right here in our city. The city has worked alongside with their leadership to help achieve this expansion. And if you're driving through the business park on the south side, you will see some cranes in the sky. This is near NEMAC. NEMAC is expanding their footprint. NEMAC is adding about 449,000 square feet to their existing plant. This expansion will look at more space for die cast production and work will be done in several phases. The city also understands the importance of investing in repairing our infrastructure. I'm excited that we're kicking off our Complete Streets initiative. This program will look at all forms of transportation and ensure that our road work projects that we're doing are done in a modernized way that increases safety. We are excited that we've received funds from the bipartisan infrastructure law to help fund this project. We also know that we have a strong tourism economy that continue, continues to grow. And folks know that Sheboygan is known as the Malibu of the Midwest and folks continue to spend their vacation right along the lakefront. Last year, the city was proud to host the Mercury Midwest Racing Challenge, which was a key successful boat racing co competition right on our lakefront. This event saw an estimated $4.7 million of tourism spending by over 40,000 visitors over the course of that weekend. With all the progress that we've made over these last few months, we also know that we must acknowledge the challenges that we also face and the work col collaboratively that we need to do to address them. 
the global economic landscape is evolving rapidly and it impacts the city. We must adapt to these continuous cha challenges and changes, even with ongoing geopolitical shifts and environmental concerns that demand our attention, we must be proactive in these measures. To navigate these challenges successfully, I continue to propose that we work on a multifaceted approach and continue to invest and partner with key partners like the Chamber to expand workforce development options to ensure our community is well equipped to have skills for the job needed for the future. We need to continue to foster a culture of continuous learning and innovation and stay ahead of the competitiveness in the global marketplace. Lastly, we all know that our strength lies with our partners throughout our community, partnering with the private sector and public sector, as well as key stakeholders. Collaboration is key to getting things done right here in Sheboygan. This helps us overcome many challenges, share knowledge, and making sure that nothing gets done alone. In conclusion, the economic outlook for our city is promising, but still continues to require a collaborative commitment and effort. Together, we can continue to build our community that is economically prosperous and also improves the quality of life for our community. I'm confident by working hand in hand, we'll secure a brighter and more resilient future for our city and all of its residents. Thank you. So thank you, um, everybody, for your continued support. Let's make 2024 another awesome year in Sheboygan County. And please let us know as a Chamber of Commerce how we can better support you. Um, and we will do everything we can to make sure everybody is thriving and moving in the same direction. Thanks again.